Greetings guys, this is Magnanimous Minds Lectures Online. Today we are treating task 2 question paper of engineering science M3. This paper was written on the 28th of October 2019. So let's check out question 1. Question 1 It's about definitions, advantages and also uh, stating of laws the first question says name two disadvantages and oh sorry it says name two advantages and two disadvantages of friction 1.2 says explain the law of conservation of energy 1.3 define the specific heat capacity of sub of a substance 1.4 says name three factors to take into con consideration when an object must be heated or cooled 1.5 define the heat value of a fuel 1.6 it says describe the following terms regarding centrifugal pumps the first one is suction head the second delivery head the third static head and 1.7 says state Faraday's second law of electrolysis. So let's answer the questions given to us in question one. Question 1.1 says the advantages of friction. We are asked to name two then the first one will be breaking of an object friction helps an object that's moving to break like in cars using the brake disc and brake pads and also it enables power transfer this through belts and contact with uh, other services it also uh, removes materials let's say maybe we want to finish like a, a surface it's possible due to friction and it also prevents a uh, sleeping uh, between two surfaces that are in contact And then the disadvantages. The first one is that it causes two surfaces that are in contact to wear off. way between two objects in contact and it also causes uh, some uh, objects to blunt off like drill bits scissors and grinding discs And then it also causes unnecessary heat, like in the braking system of a car. The moment a car brakes, like while it was traveling at high speed, the brake disc and brake pads become hot due to friction. So we can see it causes unnecessary. Unnecessary heat. 
Then 1.2 it says explain the law of conservation of energy. The law of conservation of energy states that The law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed but can be converted from one form to the other. And 1.3 says define the specific heat capacity of a substance. Specific cap capacity is the quantity of energy required to raise the temperature of 1 kg of that substance by 1 degree Celsius. Quantity of energy required It is the quantity of energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. 1.4 says uh, name three factors to consider to take into consideration when an object must be heated or cooled. 1.4 and if we check out our formula which says Q equals to mass times specific heat capacity times the temp change in temperature it tells us that the things that we have to consider is mass of substance The mass of the subject, specific heat capacity of substance, change in temperature of substance. Then 1.5 says uh, define the heat value of a fuel. The heat value of a fuel it is the quantity of heat, of heat given off when one kg of a substance is complete, completely combusted at normal temperature and pressure.
there's the definition of heat, the heat value of fuel quantity of heat given of when one kg of a substance is completely combusted at normal temperature and pressure combusted means bent when it's totally bent when this substance is totally bent then 1.6 roman figure one says define the term uh, suction head and we know that the suction head is the distance from the surface of the water to the center of the pipe It is the distance from the surface of the water to the center of the pump. And Roman figure 2 says delivery head. Delivery head is the distance from the center of the pump to the height of the substance delivered. The distance from the center of the pump to the height of the substance delivered. That's the delivery head. Then uh, Roman figure 3 says the static head. The static head is the sum of the suction head and the delivery head. So we can say is. So we can say it's the suction head plus the delivery head. And then 1.7 says state Faraday's second law of electrolysis. So Faraday's second law of electrolysis deals with a uh, elect we can just see mainly electroplating electroplating. It determines how much of a mass we need to elect electroplate a certain object and how much like the value of the current like how many amps we need so that we can deliver this much deposit that will be coated to a certain object so the law says the mass of an ele element deposited during electrolysis is proportional to the chemical equivalent of this of the element so we can see states that mass And then we're done with the question. Thank you.